Islam to all the moles around the globe and all those who watching Islam. And I greet y'all in my native tongue here in Detroit. You know what we say. What up, dog? While we pushing the bus up. What up, dog? Today I'm doing a video. Once again, it's like my third video today just to get it all out the way while I got free time. And while I occupy the rest of my day, I want to get it all out the way. Um, everything in the in the bio, the, the description, everything there, all the social media outlets, y'all should check out my TikTok for real, for real. It done grew in two months, up to 8,000 followers. So I appreciate everybody showing me love on there. There's some good content on there, mostly about politics and everyday life. I really don't do the dance challenges and all that type of stuff. Well, I haven't, but you never know what the future might hold. Um, today I'm doing a video on the religions and gangs of the Michigan Department of Corrections. Now, y'all got to remember, an organization um, in the Michigan Department of Corrections is something lawfully founded and has its own charter and has a church service or a mosque service or whatever they can legally and uh, rightfully propagate whatever their faith is. Now, the gangs are more the Bloods, the Crips, and so on and so forth. Vice Lords and GDs um, and organizations out of Chicago tend to like call themselves uh, organizations in the streets, which they are, and they, they're entitled to that. But in Michigan Department of Corrections or any prison system, they consider the security threat group. The Melanics were once an organization, but now they're labeled as a gang, but I still call them an organization. But they got their charter snatched because um, some of their heads uh, organized the stabbing and assaults of police, so they lost their charter to propagate the faith. It already wasn't that big. And they lost it. They working on it to get it back. I'm not sure the progress of it now, but I should check up on it if anybody want me to. I got the, um, you know, access or I got the ability to do it because I can reach back to so many people in prison or in the streets. Now we're gonna go through the religions. Give y'all a brief description on the ones uh, that I'm very familiar with. Let me give you their language, their codes, their sign symbols, alliances, and their organizational structure, one through 10. Um, let's do the religions first. You got the biggest religion in prison, which are the Moorish Americans, which really are in level twos. Some level fours, not very, very, very many of them in level five. Nobody want to be in level five. And tell you once again that there is no level threes in the Michigan Department of Corrections. They got rid of them is one, two, four, and five. And um, the Moors are the biggest overall, but usually in level twos and level fours. It can range anywhere from small as uh, 10 members on the yard to 300 on the whole compound. It might not be the same section, same wing, or whatever, whatever, however it's divided. It might be two, three different sides to a prison, two, three different levels. But all together, the most I ever seen them on the yard was at 250. I heard about them being at 300, but I seen it like at 250 active members, 250 out of uh, about 3,000 people on one yard, you know what I'm saying? That was in Ken Ross, level two, um, Hiawatha, and the old Ken Ross. I was there. Um, so they're pretty big. Uh, the Moabites are called the Moorish Americans. Um, they usually have a bay or eel on the back of their name. Matter of fact, all of them do. Sometimes you might get an Ali every now and then, but that takes a whole lot of work to get and obtain. Now, it's different branches of the more science tip of America. You might find a different branch every now and then, but the majority are like the Sunnis of the, the Arabic version of Islam. They uh, are the majority. My set, the 1934s, are the majority. So it, it could be one nineteen twenty eight and two other kinds, but the majority of them are going to be from the Colonel C. Kirkman Bay faction. Um, organization skills on a one through 10. I'm not just saying that because I'm a Moorish American. I'm an ill. It's, it, it, it's spelled E-L. A lot of people think it's L. And, and you can pronounce it that way. There's not, nothing wrong with that. It's short for Elohim. But uh, we pronounce it ill. So when you hear, uh, what's up, uh, Banks ill, Bird ill, 
is the last name with the um, suffix on it. Bear il. Bay short for Bayet. El short for Elohim or Il short for Elohim, which is Hebrew and God. Bay Bayet is governor. That's what those mean. Um, Bay are usually the calmer guys, and the Eels are usually the more strong spirited ones, the warriors, the protectors, the um, vanguards of the movement. Um, I get an organization a skill because how big we are, how we keep count and tabs on every gang member, the numbers, um, the weapons hit on the yard. Um, when we go to yard, if it's a battle, we can go dig up weapons. We make it our business to have weapons. Um, a lot of the guys that's in the Moorish American group, the Moabites, they are generally older and serving life without parole or a very long time. So you got a lot of guys that's been down since the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. And they really don't have nothing to lose, but they want their brothers to be safe. And this is all they have. So they protected crazy. And they're crazy overprotective. They don't like the younger guys like me hanging out with anybody else, getting any type of wrong influence and things like that. So they real big on that. And there uh, a lot of people will speak on the homosexual behavior in the Moorish Americans because we are more accepting of homosexuals than um, other gangs and stuff like that. Other gangs will stab you if you're homosexual, but um, in the nation of Islam, we'll too, maybe sometimes the Sunnis, but everybody has somebody that gets a pass if they will indulge in homosexual activity. We'll forgive a brother and they'll say, hey, you know, I'm done indulging in my lower self. I don't want to be around what they call boys or punks no more. And um, they get forgiven. And um, not everybody agrees with it, but you'll hear a lot of rumors. Uh, the Moors gay, the Moors is the... That's just a very few, and it's a lot of us, so it makes it seem like a lot more because it's a lot more of us, and it's just a bad reputation that they took on. But the respect on the yard from a 1 through 10 is about a 9. Um, and the reason I don't give it a 10 is because the homosexual stuff. But anybody will tell you when the Moors get into it, whether the guy gay, whether he uh, snitch or whatever he is, the Moors, everybody's going to be there, even the older guys, the guys in wheelchairs, everybody. And like I said, they make it a priority to have knives hidden in every uh, place that we frequent, whether that's the day room, the TV room, the room, the yard, the uh, gym. It's access to some type of weapon, usually. So that's why I give it a 10 as far as the organizational aspect of it. So when you see Moors, they do this. Islam, Mo. Islam, all is well, Mo. Islam, love, and they wear the red hats with the um, strings hanging off of it to service. So that's how you identify Moorish Americans by the Islams, the Bays, and the Eels. Um, the Prophet is Noble Timothy Drew Ali, and uh, that's the basis of the movement. The most notorious prisoner uh, is Rumor Bay. So when you ask about the Moorish Americans to an old timer, you ask about Rumor Bay, and they'll tell you. He was the real deal. Holyfield, definitely back in the day. A lot of, I'm not going to get into it. He working on the appeal, so we're not going to get into it. But he put a lot out there on the internet itself in the blog. So, But I'm not going to get into it and, and go on top of that and confirm it or anything like that right now. It's just a story. So we're going to keep it at that. But the myths and the legends are real. Um, the Sunnis, Sunni Muslims, you identify them by the big beards, right? Big old beards or the beard with the top mustache, the top part, the mustache cut off. They wear their sleeves real high. They wear their pants real high because cleanliness is next to godliness. They're avoiding dust and dirt. Um, they're the ones that say, As-salamu alaykum, Abdul Rahman, Abdul, so on and so forth. Those are the ones that they say that. And um, I get their organizational uh, skills, uh, a strong, a strong nine. Um, not a very violent, notorious group. A lot of people think the Sunnis are soft. Um, that's a stigma they got, but they do ride for their brothers. Um, they accept everybody, black, white, Arab, don't, uh, don't matter, Middle Eastern descent. Uh, I don't care if you're from Croatia, France, I don't care where you're from. 
they accept you, but they got a knock on being soft. Um, their size, the most I ever seen them at was about 150, all big beard guys. Um, let me backtrack a little bit. The Moabites alliances are um, usually, if they do have an alliance, which they don't, and it's very, very rare because it's so big, it, it's, uh, it's along the almighty peace stones and vice lords, but that's very, very rare, and it's not even really worth mentioning to get into detail with because it's so rare. Moors usually generally stick with Moors and keep the peace amongst each other because there's so many of us, it's always some type of internal affair or beef or conflict. Um, the Sunnis usually uh, align, align itself with uh, gangster disciples because, or GDE's growth and development, because um, a lot of GDs are Sunnis. Just like a lot of vice lords, which come from Moorish Americans, and peace stones, which come from Moorish Americans, a lot of them are Moors, but they rotate with their body. They don't get into the affairs of us. They might study with us. They might, um, you know, preach with us or whatever the case may be, propagate with us. But at the end of the day, when it's a fight and this, this isn't the line, they go back to their own factions and settle it. And um, the Sunnis usually a lot of self, align itself with GDs because the chief and commander, um, Larry Bernard Hoover, free him. He uh, is a devout Sunni from what I hear. So that's where that correlation comes in at. They, they use, when they do have an alliance with the GDs, but that's very rare too. Uh, they don't have many symbols outside the Star and Crescent, the big beards and stuff like that. That's how you identify those guys. And I told you the language is Assalamu Alaikum, Abdul Rahman, and so on and so forth. And uh, like I said, it's strong now on the organization aspect. It's just not a very aggressive group, which ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, they keep a lot of peace, and that's always for the, for the best. And they and they and they barely, barely, barely ever fight between each other like that. Very rarely. Now you got the Nation of Islam. Um, that's the NOI, the FOI, the fruit of Islam. You identify them by their bow ties. They wear bow tie to service. They're very clean. Usually all their face or hair shaved off or just the top mustache part. Um, they follow the teachings of the Honorable uh, Elijah Muhammad, which uh, his successor was the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan and Wallace Dean Farah Muhammad, Master Wallace Dean Farah Muhammad started it all. And he gave it to, he was God in person and he gave it to the messenger Elijah Muhammad, which gave it to the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan. And um, we'll see who succeeds him. But um, they, uh, their organizational aspect is a 10. They very, very rarely feud amongst each other. Very, very, very rarely. I've never really seen it. Maybe just a little bit of gossip here and there or getting mad at the brother. But they very rarely ever beef amongst each other. So they get a 10 on the organizational aspect. Um, their size, the most I've seen on the yard of those guys were about 70. And how I know this? Because the Moors do head counts on every organization and gang to know what we're going up against, how many people have to go to the hole. When the Moors attack, it has to be two to every one. The Muftis, the security, it has to be two to every one. And one generally has to have a weapon. If it's serious, if not, then they just go with hands, but he has to get punished. When when, when it's time for us to go, it has to be a, a, a lesson well learned. Um, the Nation of Islam, they rock for theirs. They love theirs. Ain't no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They are the ones, like I said, with the beard gone. They speak very popular. like they like robots almost. They're very, very militant, very, very trained, um, very, very conscious, very racist too. Um, and they say, As-salamu alaykum, black man, and they might rock their hands. As-salamu alaykum, black man. Um, they don't have alliances. You know, um, the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan would never condone that uh, alliances with gangs. But they um, have a lot of peace amongst themselves. And, and when one rock out, they all rock out. Like I said, they very, very, very militant. They get a 10 on the scale, 1 to 10 on organizational aspects. Not very, very big, but 
powerful in their own rights on the yard. Um, in case you're wondering about the Christians, they have no organization. And if they did, they would be the biggest group by far and the most powerful group by far, by far. You don't get too many Muslim guards or whatnot, but you get a lot of Christian guards. So they, they would have power in that aspect also. And that's, that's crazy, right? But they don't have no organizational aspect, the biggest um, religious service. They don't have it. They would, they would be about 400 deep, 300 deep on every yard. No ifs, ands, or buts about it, and they could tear up some stuff, but they, they don't have that. Everybody at the Christian services go their own way. They might do occasional Bible study today, Bible study. But other than that, it's over with. It's over. Now, you got the Melanics. They lost their charter, like I said, because they organized and stabbed some guards, so they considered like a terrorist group. The Melanics are under six point star. And, um, they frequently, quite frequently, damn near every yard, click up with the GDs, the growth and development, or the gangster disciples, or whatever you want to call it, whichever faction that you was in and you're sticking with. That's who they um, roll with. They're the six point star. They also uh, refer to or, or, or greet each other. They'll say, uh, I see Salah. And then the response will be, Marcelon, I see Salah. Response, my salam, um, organizational aspect. They definitely, definitely would get a 10 because they're very, very organized. The most I ever seen on the yard of them was about 40. Um, and they click up the GDs well and they, they, they get very, very busy. Trust me, they, the Milani guys get very, very busy. Very busy. And, um, I forgot to say that, like the Nation of Islam, they usually like Mike X, Dre X, Tremaine X, but the Melanics go by X's too, but they have nicknames, Smoke X, Cedar Block X, Blood X, Killer X, so on and so forth, but they very, very, very organized. Uh, so shout out to Melanics, I see a lot, man. Um, now, let's get into the gangs. We're gonna start off with the Bloods. Very, 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 very big, big gang it caught on like wildfire and the michigan department of corrections there's a different blood set every day there's so many sets to a set and i'm I'm about to name a few for you right you got 82 bloods which is a renegade set it wasn't sanctioned by guys in california or whatnot they just started their own thing did their own thing and they wear they flag to the right um excuse me where they flag to the left instead of the right um they took on vice lord principles some of them um, they, they just, the biggest set of bloods in Michigan Department of Corrections, and maybe some of the most vicious, a lot of them come from Detroit, but you got the 82 bloods, that's the headbangers, you got 8213 bloods, which is a set from them, you got the sex money murder bloods, which is an East Coast set, you got, um, g Shine. Midwest set, you got uh, Wolfgang po Moneybag Power Rule, you got the regular Moneybag Power Rule, uh, you got Seven Mile Bloods, um, Money Power Respect Bloods, Rolling 20 Bloods, Denver Lane Bloods, you got, uh, that's 10 right there, you got um, Fruit Time Power Rule. Cedar Block Power Rule, Queen Street Power Rule, uh, Crowns Park Power Rule, Elm Street Power Rule. That's 15 sets. At least 15 sets right there. I can name off Bill without really struggling to name them. When I tell you it could be 20 blood, Power Rule Assassin, 5-5 five, five Deuce, or 6-6 six, six Deuce, blood. You can keep going on and on and on and on. So with them spiraling out of control like that and hip-hop taking off and Lil Wayne and the game making it cool, it made a lot of blood sets and a lot of people bloods. So they always have internal conflict. The biggest stabbers and assaults, assailants of bloods are other bloods. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's like the Crips in, in California, except the bloods here 
are the true sea rabs in the bucket crabs. They pull each other down. Um, like I said, a whole lot of internal affairs. Ain't no if ends, or buts about it. Every day is something with them guys. But on an organizational aspect, out of 10, 1 through 10, I get them about a 4. Uh, they try. And they fairly new gang. Very violent. Access to knives and stuff like that is not is not always at the tip of their hand because they don't organize. They don't count people when they come to the yard. You, you know what I'm saying? They don't try to see where the stash spots of weapons are at. But they big. They very respected. They young. They wild. They violent. So people don't try bloods like that. You know what I'm saying? And the bloods roll over a smaller group and tend to make peace with the bigger groups. Um, and really, only people that could really challenge Bloods head up is probably the GD Milani connection and the Moorish Americans. The only people that probably can crush that fire on a yard at any given time. But level five, they got it. Level four, they got it. All, all those guys are generally in the higher levels because, like I said, they young, they wild, they crazy. They say, what's up, Blood? They don't like the word slob. they like, what up, Blood? What's big and back, booling by the bull? Hey, can I get that chocolate bit bookie on a? That's a chocolate chip cookie. Can I get that chocolate bit bookie on a on the plate tonight? Them guys is crazy. Out they mind, right? They say two twelve, and the response would be two oh four. Blood love two twelve, and uh, their main enemies are the Crips. The religious organizations don't have them main enemies like that, except probably the Melanics, and they usually get into it with the Lords and the Bloods. But it can be conflict amongst anybody. It could be Melanic. Uh, Moors, Sunnis, Melanics, Sunnis, Nation of Islam, conflict can arise between any groups, but generally the Bloods um, go at it with Crips, which Crips are not really prevalent on the yard at all and don't get no respect when they are. And um, they don't even compete with the, 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 the Bloods. They usually flip over or don't claim it because they're scared. I don't see Bloods go to guys and be like, dog, you better tighten that shit up. We don't want to hear this, this, and that. But I'll do a video on that, too, because a lot of people intrigued by the Bloods. Uh, so I ain't going to get too deep off into it. Like I said, they don't like the word slob. They symbols are usually five-point stars, four-pointed stars, three-pointed crowns. Um, their alliances usually are with the vice lords. Usually with the vice lords, maybe sometimes the Latin counts. Sometimes the Latin counts, king connection. Um Crips, I ain't gonna get into too much detail about that. They really ain't around, but they say cuz, they disrespect word is crab. Um they they generally try to wear something blue like a, a wristband or whatever. Um alliances usually with GDs if they are able to establish an alliance, but people don't want those problems with the bloods like that, and they feel like the Crips be trying to hide behind them, so um I ain't gonna get into too much about that. They don't have no organization or, or nothing. Uh, the vice lords usually click up with the bloods. The vice lords, VL, they don't like the word Vicky Lou and hooks or referring to the police as 12 because that's one of their numbers. So um, the vice lords usually click with the bloods, maybe sometimes the moors, very, very rarely, maybe in the higher levels where there ain't many of them, but in the lower levels, it's usually with the bloods. Or very, very often it's the kings, the counts, all together with the vice lords and maybe clicked up with the cash flows too. So they all ride under the five or four pointed diamonds. And um, they say all is well all the time. Uh, shake up with the V's. They pitchforks go down. You can identify them by tattoos of the Playboy bunny on them. Um, five star crescent with the bunny ears behind it. And they palms up, Almighty. They say all. They say Almighty or Mighty, and this guy say Mighty back. Throw his palms up. So that, that's the uh, vice lords, and as uh, far as the organizational aspect, I would say they're about a seven. A lot of those guys are becoming younger and younger, and it's getting a little bit more and more wild. And then they teamed up with the blood, so it's becoming more and more wild. So they get about a seven on there. The most I ever seen them on the yard. Was probably about 50 deep. I think it was like 50 deep. GDs, growth and development, you identify them. Um, they say uh, 
410 and you respond 412. 410 is plenty much love. 412 is never too much. Never too much love. So you identify them by six pointed crowns. Six excuse me, six yeah, six three pointed crowns or six pointed crowns and six pointed stars on their body. And they shake up with the pitchforks. They pitchforks go up. They disrespectful word is uh, glazed on us, bricks. Um, even though those are not real diss words, people still get offended over snowflakes. Because um, the snowflake come down and it's got six points on it. Uh, their organizational skills, though, are exceptional, especially for them being so young. A lot of them being young. They got a lot of older guys, too. But them, for them being so young, they get a strong eight. For sure, for sure. And they something to be reckoned with. They ain't nothing to be played with at all. They're not like the Crips or none of that. They used to get into it with the Bloods uh, because GDs tend to be more mature young guys and Bloods tend to be more of an older young crowd, excuse me, an older crowd. Um, They click with the Melanics, sometimes the Sunnis. Even sometimes you might get a yard where they click with the Cobras, uh, the Maniac Latin Disciples. But that's very rare because the Maniac Latin Disciples tend to be more of a Caucasian group with a few Latins, but take on the Caucasian culture. They're not from Detroit. A lot of them not from Detroit. A lot of GDs not from Detroit, but a lot of them, they, they, they say they don't want to take on that white problem. And they don't tend to click with people that's under the same nation as those guys because the Melanics and Spanish Cobras are in that nation. Um, they might even click with the Serranos sometimes, but that's very, very, very rare these days. So you got the Maniac Latin Disciples. Um, they got a lot of horns on them. The Cobras got the snakes on them. Uh, the Cobras say 312. The Maniac Latin Disciples say uh, 1312. Maniac Love, Ma Maniaco Love. They click with each other. The Counts, I mean, excuse me, the Cobras, the MLDs, and Serranos tend to all click because those usually white guys, Mexicans, um, mixed people. Um, but the... Maniac Latin Disciples on an organizational tip, they get a nine, strong nine. They don't usually have the best weaponry, but they're very organized. One of them go, they all got to go. It's not you rotate with us or you're not. It's either you maniac or you're not. You can get on. And once you off, you off. That is that is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Very rarely are they going to take you back if you're not there to support them through any endeavors at any time that you say you're not mobbed or rotating with the clique. Maniac Latin Disciples are very, very organized, and they're not scary to be such a small group. The deepest I ever seen them on the yard was five members. Uh, the Cobras, the deepest I ever seen them was 20 members. That's who they click up with. And they, like, they all bunch them in the same category. It's hard to tell them apart. Like I said, the Cobras say 312. They had snakes on them. They're usually from Flint area, usually Caucasian. You know, the GDs more black. The Maniacs are more white Mexican um, or mixed. And the Cobras are usually white guys. The Spanish Cobras. And I give them also a nine because they stick together. Weaponry night might not be the greatest, but they'll go with anybody if it comes to that. They generally a peaceful group to stay to themselves because they don't do the same things, watch the same things, usually bet on the same things like that. So if they usually do get into it with somebody, it's the Bloods. Usually, it's usually the Bloods. The Bloods is a common denominator in a lot of this, right? Uh, you got the Serranos. Like I said, they click with. The, the MLDs, Spanish Cobras. Now, the Serranos, you can identify them by having a 13 on them or three dots made in a triangle. Um, the Serranos, they throw up the 13. They have it on their body. Um, they click with the Mexican Mafia, which they very, very rare in MDLC also. But they, like I said, they click with the Cobras and the Maniacs. And they usually all rock together, um, the Serranos. I give a strong 10 on organizational aspect. They look out for each other. They love each other. They push one another to go home, but when it's on the floor, they go on. And generally, the Serranos I run across, or the Mexican Mafia I run across, they're doing a very, very long time, if not life. So that's a real dangerous group to be messing with. The Serranos, uh, this word, are sewer rats. Maniacs, I'm not sure what they this words are. Um, or the, uh, the Cobras. So, uh, I, I never heard it. People usually don't diss them. 
um, or that, do they ever say, oh, don't say this or that. They're a very mature group. Serranos are too, along with the Mexican Mafia. The deepest I ever seen the Serranos on the yard are about 10. The deepest I ever seen them. Um, you got the Cash Flow, shout out Brutus, uh, Southwest Detroit gang. Very, 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 very organized. They get a 10 on the organizational aspect. Um, Webbetry ain't the best, but they do have it, and they will go with anybody, and they tend to click with the Latin Counts and Kings because a lot of the flows are Mexican, white, Latin descent, mixed, um, usually from Southwest Detroit, but you got people from other places also. Um, calling them broke, broke flows is, uh, is a diss word. Um, you realize, uh, excuse me, you see them, and you usually see them saying, uh, what's up, Cash? They'd be like, what up, Flo? So on and so forth. They shake up with the C's. They under uh, a teepee. It's like a tent. Right? Like this. It's a tent. They stay to themselves. Very, very cool people, man. Uh, but they're not very, very big. The most I ever seen them on the yard was like four deep. And uh, you, you really don't know a whole lot about them because they're not very, very active on the scene of uh, beef and, and politics and stuff like that. They got very, very good organization. They don't beef amongst each other. But I, and I think it's like the bigger the group, the more friction that you're going to get. Um, those are all the gangs right there, how you identify them, their size and organizational aspect, the words, the alliances, uh, and, a, and a brief description of them. But you also got the cities too. And um, you got people that rotate with the cities. Detroit not together, they so big. Detroit usually not together, but when they do, that's a movement that will crush anybody. Them and the Christians will crush anybody if they had a, a movement uh, more frequently. It's level one yards, they usually do it no matter where you're from Detroit, y'all rocking together, Detroit versus everybody. You dig what I'm talking about? So that's what they are. But Flint, those guys, uh, they really rock out with each other. Uh, they don't mind going the distance, and a lot of them are doing a long time. So you got the Flint guys, the Pontiac guys, the, the Saginaw guys, which got a bad reputation for being gay, too. Um, Grand Rapids, Benton Harbor, and you got your Pontiac guys and your occasional Inkster groups, but those are small cities, Inkster, um, Saginaw, Pontiac. Um, but Detroit by far blow anybody out the water. But far as organized and being deep also, too, on every yard, it's the Flint guys, without a doubt. But I gave y'all the info right there. You got any questions, drop them in the comment. And I'll respond. You did. Peace and blessings to all y'all, man. Go check out all my social media links. Peace and love.